Hey guys, what you're about to see is the beautiful, fabled Riches of the Reef. This is the Queen's Crystal Barrows, aka the Treasure Room. This is where you're going to be able to get all of the loot after the end of your Prison of Elders run. As mentioned in our recent video, these chests aren't tied to the weekly reset, so you'll be able to open it as many times as you like, so long as you have enough treasure keys to do so. You'll only be able to use one key per chest, so you won't be able to keep opening the same chest even if you you have multiple keys in your inventory. If you want to use your other keys, you will need to start a fresh run of a Prison of Elders challenge mode. Then you'll need to finish it and make your way back to the treasure room to open the chest again. You can do this as many times as you'd like, and if you have enough keys, you can open the big chest as many times as you like, but again, you can't reopen it in the same playthrough. You would have needed to start over again. Now you may have been wondering, this is great and all, but what about the in-game loot? What about the fallen themed gear? Well, all of that can be purchased, but only one armor piece and one weapon is on sale at a time. You can use the armor and weapon cores you get at the end of your run, and you can use those to purchase the gear from Varix. Each week, you'll have something different that you can buy. However, you can also get a random item from him using what's called a Judgment's Chance. This is basically an in-game engram, and when you buy it, you'll get a random weapon or armor. So you should try to buy this if you already have what he's selling that week. Now, what's really interesting about this in-game gear is all the new Fallen-specific perks. Each of the armor pieces and each of the weapons has an in-tier perk that is deadly to the Fallen. In this half of the video, I'm going to show you each of those perks. First off, the armor. Each of the following third-tier perks are randomly selected when purchasing the item for an armor core or judgment's chance. Also, most of these new perks will only be active in the Prison of Elders, so don't expect to have as much success with this gear out in the wild. But to be fair, it's very strong in the Prison of Elders, so it's worth using. Starting with the helmets, you've got the first tier perk of causing damage with a grenade reduces your melee cooldown, and then the second tier is increased super energy gained from killing minions of the darkness, and the third tier perks are the Arbiter set. This perk is randomly selected for you when you buy it, and it will apply a greatly increased recovery and super recharge when fighting a certain enemy in the Prison of Elders. For chest pieces, the first perk on each chest increases the amount of primary ammunition you can carry. The primary is chosen randomly, so it won't be even primary, just one of them. The next perk on each chest increases the amount of special weapon ammunition you can carry, and for the third tier options, the game will randomly select out of the Rampart set. This will greatly increase the armor and melee recharge when fighting a certain enemy in the Prison of Elders. And for gauntlets, we've got increased reload speed for all special weapons, the increased grenade throw distance, and finally, a universal ether perk that will help you generate orbs. It's not as strong, but it'll work anywhere, unlike the other fallen perks that only work in PoE. The ether perk is randomly generated, and personally my favorite is the ether needle and the ether claw, since these will probably be the easiest to do. And finally, we've got the leg perks. These only have two perks, and the first of which increases the heavy weapon ammunition that you can carry. And then there's the stalker options, which greatly increase agility and grenade recharge when fighting a certain enemy type. So as you can see, you'll want to try and get multiple pieces of this armor so that you can stack it all in one particularly troublesome enemy, or maybe even it out with the Fallen, Cabal, and Hive, depending on how much you could use against that enemy type. You may find some encounters less difficult, while others extremely hard, and would probably have a much easier time if all of your gear was focused for one enemy. It'll probably take some experimentation. And just as a reminder, all of this in-game armor comes standard with the max defense and max light, so you don't need to ascend it at all. Now I'd like to discuss the weapons and their unique perks. All of these have fallen specific perks, and the weapons themselves have pretty good base stats. Each of these perks that you're seeing are on the end tier. They're randomly chosen when you buy the weapon. Demotion, Disciplinarian, Dregburn, Shankburn, Mutineer, and Vandalburn. Unlike the armor, these perks will function in any engagement, but obviously only with Fallen. If you're not going to be fighting any Fallen, it's probably not worth using them. And with that, I'd like to get your first impressions on all of these new perks. Personally, I would have liked the weapons to be a little bit stronger, but who knows? I really will need to test it out first. Anyway, I'm definitely interested in your guys' thoughts about all of this. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the expansion right now, and try not to rush through it all this time, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.